Do the rhyme clap. Yes. We'll get to start recording. Okay. Yep. Now. Yep. And we'll do the rhyme clap. Yep. Three, two, one. Inspiration <coughs> Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here again with Joe Neuer. How are you this week, Joe? Yeah, all good. And uh, really feeling uh, pumped up for this one. As Ready usual. for week 11 on the podcast. I can't believe it, Al. Al. Uh, how quickly that's gone, it's just unreal, isn't it? How oh, absolutely. We were, and we were just talking about this before the show, how quickly this has gone and how quick some of the <clears> momentum <throat> and the structure and everything has been built up, which is really mm-hmm. good. We are, for the first time this week, we are also live streaming this on Instagram as we're recording. Yeah, it's a lot not, of Instagram. Not quite sure what we're going to do with the footage no. from this yet, but we'll keep you guys posted, yeah. giving it a little bit experiment to see how it looks. Yeah. Me keeping my gut sucked in as we're getting filmed to make <laughs> sure it doesn't look too bad. I did have Chinese last night. Did you? Oh, what do you have? Is it nice? Um, chili beef. It's always chili beef. Oh, I love uh, that. Very, the crispy chili beef. Food, don't, yeah. don't they call that cat's whiskers or something? I've never heard that before. I'm yeah, going to look so. that up later. Yeah, I think it is. It's nice. I like that. It's it's, it's really nice. Yeah, nice. A bit jealous actually. To be fair, I'm okay. trying to be healthy. I not so much so. <laughs> well, we hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of Chinese food, and we'll see you again next week. <laughs> well <Right>. done. <laughs> so, what are we talking about this week, Joe? Um, so this week it's about um, how having an open mind creates opportunity. Opportunity. And I spoke to this. The reason this got inspired for me um, to choose this topic was because on day 201, um, I'll do the daily videos. Um, so if you do tune into the daily videos, um, it's just a sort of thing about open open mind, how it creates the opportunity. And I thought it'd be good to go deep on these subjects. We talk about this and it'd be nice to go a little bit deeper on this type of subject because as I do the sound bites, yeah, they are about one minute. So I think it'd be nice if sort of to start to pick out some of that and maybe go a little bit. Pick out a popular yeah. ones and expand on it a bit more, yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So that's what. Um, so that's what so for saying. those who haven't seen the video, and we encourage you to check out Joe's um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook feeds. Video will be on there. Was it two hundred one? Did you say? Yeah, it was two hundred one. This one. Yeah, for day those who haven't seen that, what did you talk about in that video then? Just about being, you know, having an open mind um, and just being open to not being closed, really, because that's when you. You don't spot the opportunity if you don't if you don't sort of keep your mind open. Now, sometimes you're not gonna you're not gonna agree with whatever's being said, but is it what can you take out of that to move forward? And I think that's that's really what's important is that I, you know we we'll, as we go through the podcast today and talk about it, I'll give you a little example of what happened to me. And I think you know it's an important piece. And if I'd stuck where I was, then I wouldn't be here now. And, I, and we talk a lot about that the things how we do on this podcast, don't we? Um, so it's just really going back to me. You know, I always do on the on the podcast. I always talk about the definition. Um, the definition is willing to consider new ideas and being unprejudiced, which I think is really good because you know we can become prejudiced depending on a lot of things. Yes. Like you know, we just don't like someone. I'm not going to listen to you because I don't like you. But that actually might be saying something very valuable. But you've closed your mind off because mm. you don't like them. It's a preconception. It's going to be rubbish. So yeah. you don't even take in what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure I've been guilty of that in the past. I have too. I'm just going <laughs> pointing to the Insta Live. <laughs> yeah, I think we all have. I think that's the human condition. I think we're, we're just complicated beings. And I think a lot of that comes down to even conscious and unconscious bias to, you know, and how, how we think about things as we go through our day. We might not even realise that we're doing it. Um, not being open minded, and that's really one of the, the you know the keys that that we've got to take away from this. So I've got a couple of uh, object- objectives for this particular podcast. So, what is an open mind? We're going to look at what is yeah. it. How can we start to be open minded? And lastly, you know, making a plan. How can we start to make a plan to become more open minded? I think think for me, it's more around or for us, and you can disagree or agree Lee, about how you can start to be more conscious of how much of an open mind that you have. Um, and I think those are sort of three things we, we can talk about, really. Yeah. And, uh, what do you think about that? How do you think that sounds is, good? Is, is that sounds magic? good, and hopefully a bit challenging on because I like to think that I treat stuff with an open mind yeah. more so than I ever have done before. Mm-hmm. In fact, I wouldn't be here doing this with you now if that wasn't the case. Um, but it's probably something that would be good to yeah kind of examine that a bit deeper. Yeah. So we'll go off and we'll kick off then. Let's let's do that. So I'm going to start with a little story. So. Oh wow! I was you know, I was a team meet, team leader. I don't know if I've, I don't think I have told this story before. Maybe Leah correct me. I'm sure he's got a better memory than I have. <laughs> well, you my team leader at the time, Joe. Is this the story? It was <laughs> actually. Actually, I don't. Th- you might not have been in the team because I had a few connotations of that. Uh, that um, uh, of that. What do they call it? When you've got different 
makeup of people with different connotation. Is Connotations that right? a good a word. That's the word I would use. A different set of people. But yeah, because Lee, Lee, you joined, didn't you, from a different department. So um, this might have been before this. I think this was before your time. So maybe this is something you haven't heard before. Okay. Um, hopefully it isn't. So what happened was I was a team leader. I think I've been a team leader for probably, I, thought, I put here six years. It could be less. And I joined, as I said, company. And we don't mention companies in here because it's all about growing. And um, I'd been a team leader. I'd, I'd got people in the team. I'd, I'd train them from straight off the street uh, to do what they need to do in yeah. the job. And so I, I felt pretty pretty confident as a team leader. I felt, well, yeah, I've got this now. You know, I'm, I'm a you know, team leader. I'm a leader. I feel like I, I can do this job. Um, and then what happened was, was one of my... Um, one of my bosses actually, and I'll have to tell you after the podcast who it was. And then you'll know, and I think actually this could have produced, this could have been, actually I'm really thinking about when we talked about conscious and unconscious bias and actually whether you resonate with someone or not, probably had an impact and you'll probably, when I tell you, we'll have to do it after this, when I tell you, I think this will make a lot more sense. Anyway, my manager at the time said, I'm going to put you on a team leader course. So what do you think I might, what, so talking about this story, what do you think I might have been thinking at the time? Well, where you're leading into, I'm going to presume <laughs> your thought was, what the hell, I am a team leader, <laughs> why are you tend to be on a course to do my job? Yeah, that's exactly what <laughs> I thought. Now, you've probably come across this in your type of area as well, because we, we've got someone who, who you know to develop and you think it would be beneficial. And that's exactly how I felt. That why the hell are they putting me on this team leader course when, you know, I'd, I've been doing the team leading for like six years. I think it's maybe a bit less than that, to be fair. Maybe in three years, I put six, but it's probably less. But it's been so intense. It's been such an intense period because the business was growing. Yeah. That it was like almost like a, a baptism of fire into leadership. And of course, when you, leadership's a very, very hard role, it's a different set of skills, isn't it, from any other sort of position. Um, and uh, being me of my age, you seem to think, well, I think I've done all this, I've got people through, they're doing their job well, they're doing great, so I must be good. you know. And I think there was that little bit, probably a little bit of what you're doing, putting me on the course, I'm going, I feel like I'm going backwards, maybe potentially a little bit of arrogance in there, yeah. perhaps, potentially, because I was quite young and I thought, well, I think I've got this, so maybe I need to be tempered. Um, so that was it, really. So what happened was I was really resistant. Right. So I, had, I went anyway, because I'm quite... Even back then, I always wanted to help, so I go, I go on it, I go through the motions, I go along, and I'll just try and learn what I can out of it. So I was, so I was on the road to this whole thing around, you know, open mindedness and you know, learning. I so, said, well, there might be something you know, I can take away. You know, I'm, I'm probably not going to learn anything. Was probably the attitude I had. And there's some other people that I will tell you later in the podcast that, uh, well, after the podcast, that were in that room with me as well, and you'll know them. And so we went along. And I went in there, I went into the room and I sat there um, and actually got video now, so it's good. So you guys are gonna see this and Lee can probably describe to okay, I sat there, I went into the room yeah, and I sat there with like this. Arms folded, yeah, head down, yeah, confrontational not, face on. Almost well, not that I can well my 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 what's my I don't know if I've got a confront I've got a confrontational <laughs> face. I, think oh, I probably have actually. To. I have actually. I think depending on how I'm feeling, I have got one. If I don't really agree, you'll probably see it all written all over my face, as they say, and, and you're right. So I sat there. If you do see what we've got on Instagram, you'll have seen that just now from Joe. You didn't even realise you did it, but when you yeah. did your arms folded, the whole body language, everything. So there you go. See, it does work. And so the thing about this was that uh, this is what I think triggered the open mind video and things like that, because I, had, I sat there and it must have been awful for the person who's going to take that that session. Anyway, there's this guy, and I can't mention names, also we can't mention names, because just in case. Um, but this guy was awesome. He was so good. And he obviously realized, read the room. And I can't tell you that I actually learned so much in that in that uh, course um, that it was just brilliant. And I wanted to do, and then in fact, going from there, I did that and I did another level of management course and I thought it was brilliant so when did that change for you were you was it when you were in the room and they were talking or was it after the event what when was, did you go from being against it to thinking this is really good well it was when I was in the room and I started they started talking about all the different things like Adair and different models and how people are and you were a theory behind leadership yeah like yeah. you know not just oh because the way I looked at leadership was we just got to get the job done it's a very mechanical piece of yeah it's not it. it was like, wasn't very much 
people children. I want to be nice to people. Of course, I'd be nice to people. It's not more about what drives people, what makes people work, why did they come to work. You know, um, this Herzberg's um, hygiene theory, you know, about the environment and people are working, and all that cultural all the stuff. psychology elements. Yeah, and, and I really took to, and even now I'm getting chills, and I do some podcasts, but I'm getting chills now talking about because actually I can feel that really inspires me even yeah. now. Even thinking back to them, I'm getting good vibes about oh wow this is just amazing stuff and that probably another sort of connecting the dot backwards which led me to being here now um and had i not done that and had that experience then maybe perhaps it would never have happened yeah and so that's really that whole story and i think it's really powerful and i just wanted to make sure people out there don't go into places where oh i'm going to go in and go well i'm not going to learn anything because i have seen that um and i do training myself and so uh, it, it just even you're not letting the opportunities permeate through your your soul or through you you're denying yourself of something that might there might be something in there that you can take and grow from and that's really what I was, this really what i was talking about really um so that was a story have you got any stories that you had that at all or i have yeah i'll just say on yours with that so that's good so that's do you think that was a big catalyst for you becoming more open-minded or was that was it was it something as you matured more, that the, the concept of being open-minded became more of a thing? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I had a few people in, in my team, and I got really excited about it. And you know I get excited, don't you? I get excited about it, and I'll get new stuff. I get really excited. Oh, I've got to try it. I've got to try it. And, and so my team actually picked up on this. And every time I went to have like one of these lessons, I'd come back and i go, oh, you've been on that management course, haven't you, Joe? Because I'd do a little questionnaire, yeah. or I'd do a little try a little bit of this. And it wasn't very subtle, because, I mean, a lot of stuff we've got to do is subtle, but but i was learning i was learning i was learning becoming a leader um and for me it was um a process of just absorbing it and doing it um but i it was at the time i was i just I was always on like i always felt to me that it was something that i'd be learning and doing so i'd, I'd be really engaged with it yeah and i do i wasn't on your team then joe but i do remember when it happened because on somebody else's team at the time someone who's right. still a really good friend to this day actually right. yeah um and i remember that same thing they went on the course came mm. out trying different things oh, I think so I you could see as a group of people mm. it was definitely having an impact yeah. on all of you um yeah and i have I've, well i'm going to give this story because you made it pop in my head but i don't okay. really know well i'm hoping it fits in well with what we're talking about cool, but it's slightly different to it so i yeah. i suppose it comes down to how you are as a person mm -hmm. how you led and stuff like that so i same to you i think i have a very open-minded approach to things i have a lot more of an open-minded approach now as i have and I've, mm -hmm. as i've got older and grown up mm -hmm. i have more and more of that and i always within my work try and take a real collaborative approach to everything mm -hmm. and i believe there isn't a single no matter what your role is or where you are or anything yeah. else yeah. there isn't a single person no matter what their role is top to bottom or how long they've been involved that you can't necessarily learn something from and i always try and give put, pass that message out to people especially where mm. you see like you said resistance to training or learning or developing for people just taking other people's ideas on board so quite a while ago i, I and what made me think about it, i had a similar experience to you i was new to team leading um in a business that had grown very very rapidly and i think a slightly different position than you that i hadn't been doing it for very long and I wasn't getting the responses I needed from people because I'd gone from working alongside them to being a team leader. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing and I can say that now and probably for the first year, couple of years I was doing it, I wasn't very good because I didn't have any of that theory stuff like you talked about, I was just mm -hmm. muddling through the day. And in the same way, the business set up a course, um, teach about leadership stuff, which I went into it, I think, open-minded as in with the view of, I need some help here, I need to learn, but I had no idea that this whole theory side of leadership even mm. existed. It completely opened, and that that course is why I'm sitting here now doing this. And it's you know I would say that my my whole what I build a lot of my job around, where my career ambitions are, and everything else like that, and how I like to shape myself, I can trace everything back to that course and realizing this stuff existed in the first place. And then I was still a little while long. New manager came in. We didn't really see eye to eye on stuff. As I say with everything, it doesn't mean I was right or they were right. We just didn't see eye to eye on things. Um, and he kind of offered out some ultimatums to me on various things. And one of them was that he said, well, well there's this person in the business can coach you. Do you want him to come in and help you solve this problem? And I said, yes. And it was a great thing for me because this person, I've referenced them a couple of times in this mm. podcast because I really learned a lot from them. And they really helped me practically apply that theory 
and I learn so much from them and a lot of things that I still use to this day and it's really really beneficial for me and I think really helped shape you know they gave me some information and I took that and built and built and built and grew and really escalated my learning but after the event I was told by that manager that they were really disappointed that I said yes to having that support because they were testing me and that was what the, they wanted to see from me is me to go no absolutely i can do this by myself i'm going to take the ball by the horns and i kind of acknowledge that if you like and it, it comes back into a head every so often and i i still to this day really disagree with that sentiment because i don't i don't think anyone should be in a position where they think that it is a negative to acknowledge you need some support or it'd be good to have some learning and that no matter what stage you're in i mean at this time i was very very new Obviously, this person was a lot more senior and believed they had a lot of years under their belt. But even at that stage, I don't think you should ever be in a position where you think you haven't got something to learn from someone or it's a weakness to bring in that support. And it just that what you were talking about really made that pop back into my head there. And I think it's an example where I think I was and, that, you know, I didn't know it at the time, but being quite open minded on that. But I was working with someone who was very close minded to that idea of support exactly like you said because I don't think they liked the person so they were completely closed off to anything they could give yeah I, I love that uh, for me that piece around it was testing you almost sounds like their leadership what needed they Very needed, they needed some, like, their own leadership yeah. guidance because that's almost like blindsiding you a little bit yeah I felt, from oh that and that was there, was there was some of that stuff going on and I just as well I think it's just especially if you're in a larger organisation, any time there's a chance to collaborate, I think that's what brings the best results. Yeah, I agree. And I think on that one, that's that note, when they said, you know, I was looking for a different type of reaction, there almost seems to be like a bit of an ego going on there as well. Yeah. Like almost like an ego system. I'm just putting that about that. Get that in every chance Yeah, I like get. that. Yeah, it's the ego system. And again, you know, genuinely, I don't think, from what you told me, I didn't, I don't know, I, and this, I don't know this history really, um, but it didn't seem to me that like it had your true interests at heart as a as a person that reported to this person, um, which to me is well. No, I think there was probably a point they were trying to prove at the time. Okay. But again, that's again closes the mind off because right, they yeah. decided what the outcome is going to be, yeah. and they're orchestrating a situation that's going to give you that outcome rather yeah. than trying to get the best result. Yeah, and I think actually trying to orchestrate an outcome rather than letting you solve your your situation yourself with their support which is part of leadership yeah he was saying well i want you to go to a certain path this path and he wasn't allowing you to go to that path almost he didn't want you to go but you did but he didn't want you to go to that path which is really like such an interesting i think useful thing to consider when you're a leader that yes you know people have to go their path but you have to support them provide they're getting the right outcomes and i think there's a lot of this with this you went you got the right outcomes but you just in a different in a different way to what they expected you to do which i think is a fantastic to be fair i think that's what that leadership is i, I like it love it yes cool. thank you it's good cool. no um so going back to that so i do so is about open minds isn't it because um for that you're willing to accept help yes so if you weren't, you wouldn't accept it. So no, I'm going to carry on. I'm going to put my blinkers on. I'm going to put my head in my sand. I'm going to put, do an ostrich. I'm going to put my head in the sand, and I'm just going to continue to, to dive on. So this is perfect example. Two examples that now we've had of being open minded. Actually, Lee was much more open minded than I was. So right, Ryan, we're taking a quick pause here. Loitering out here. Oh, did you come through? I will put my hand over Instagram, and you can run past. Go on. Then. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Okay. That's a bit behind the scenes there for yeah. people watching on Instagram. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, I'm going to do okay. your do your advert, Joe, and then we'll go back into the story because okay. we're 20 minutes in now, so we're, Already? Over, we're over advert time. Oh, you started. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're going back in again, Ryan. Right, just want to take a pause there, Joe, just to mention JN Coaching Technologies. As we know, coaching is Joe's bread and butter, is what he loves to do. If you stick JN Coaching Technologies into your search engine, you will be able to find Joe's website. On there are loads of resources, lots of reading materials, loads of activities you can do to help your own development. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Joe's blog that he puts out every week that you can subscribe to. You can get to this podcast that you are listening now to on there yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, and as well, Joe, coaching is what Joe loves to do. So if you want to get 
some support from Joe. If you want to get involved with that, you can drop him a message there as well. That is JN Coaching Technologies. Wow, wow, well, that 20 minutes has just gone flying by. I can't believe how quick it's gone. So we just, and those two stories themselves just, just took up. And I think there's a lot in there, though, you'll take away from you and know, that's how what, you can be, I think. Yeah, and that's what, you know, we hope you guys is by us, you know, not just giving you theory, but giving the theory and backing up some real life experiences that can help your own growth and development as well. And as we always say, we'd love to hear your guys' stories as well. So if you want to drop us a message, um, give us some feedback on any of the social media platforms, we would absolutely love to hear from you. Well, lovely. Been joined by someone on Instagram. Lovely. Uh, hello. Welcome, Megan Neuer. <laughs> oh, love it. So, yeah. So just um, want to say to you, you know, what is... And what is an open mind? So an open mind is really the possibility of leaving the door open, having possibility. I think we've talked a lot about that. We've talked a lot around that already, and we've talked about this in the previous podcast. I'm going to mention this, and I'm going to go do it again because I think it's really important not to be in victim mode. You know, yes, um, because being in victim mode, and we've talked about this a lot, is that that you shut down every responsibility, but every possibility, because what you're saying is you're giving your uh, responsibility away. So if you do that, you're saying you're powerless, and if you're powerless, then you're unable to be open-minded because you're saying it's all out there rather than there's anything yeah. I can do. So I think that's really important to sort of re-reference that. And this all this stuff that we're doing links into everything that we do. So from episode one through to now, episode 11 even, it does, it does resonate. It all links together. Um, so it's considering everything you've never thought of. You know, it's just really trying to learn. Um, like for me, I, I learned bass guitar, so I've got another little story where friends of mine said, right, we're going to start a band. And I said, really? You know, because I thought being in the band would be like, in my day, like Duran Duran or Lil 42. I'm getting really old school now. Um, but like, you, you imagine those people, when they had a, when my, my, my reality when I thought of a band was not just an old band that you just get together with your mates and you just have a fun. It was like, oh, if I want to be a band, I want it to be like a successful band. Yeah, yeah. So when they said we're going to put a band together, I was like, can I say the word poo pooed the idea? <laughs> yes, you can, Joe. Is that I a bad thing? I think we're going to get censored for that. <laughs> no, we've got 18 on the podcast. <laughs> um, but I poo pooed the idea, and I was, and I was, like, was quite negative reacted to that. And I was now thinking about it, quite shocked. So I was like crushing their dreams as their friend, going, What are you doing that for? You won't get anywhere. You know, no, almost that's really quite negative. Yeah, yeah. So they went and, straight in with it's going to fail before yeah. anything even happens. Um, and it's really weird because then they decide to get the band together and they decided to do it. And then as we talked more about it, you know, they kept talking more about it, they got together. And then one day, um, that she approached me to see if I would join the band as a bass guitarist. And of course, they've been talking about it and gradually. Over those discussions, and you know, you talk about as mates, and, you, and actually, they done through those conversations, those gradual conversations, they'd open my mind up to say, Do you know, what we did bass play, would you join? And I thought, What, me? What, play bass in, in a band? You're joking. Um, and they said, Yeah, yeah, we, we'll show you. So then they almost like gave me the opportunity yeah. and showed me some really basic things to do on the bass, and then. But they eased you into it, yeah. Yeah, and then I became, I then I played bass. And then again, but again, I was closed minded, but someone opened me up. Had they not, I would have never learnt to play the bass guitar. That again is another. Learn, you don't pick up skills, and those, yeah, yeah. you know, that skill. I would not have had those skills. I wouldn't have had the skills with the previous story. And now this story. So that's really another story around that, really. And my language is very close. Oh, you won't do that. Can't do that. And if you say those words, and I talk a lot about language, and we talk a lot about language, don't we? Around if I say I can't, you then draw a line. I'm doing this hand thing you guys on the podcast like, and you can't go above that line because yeah. you say I can't in your you head you've put a blocker there yeah a blocker a ceiling something you're not going to get through because once you say I can't you're shutting off every possibility um, so you're just saying nothing's possible and you'll never do that and that's the sort of language you're using and again a lot of it probably comes back to you know when I was growing up and the things the experiences that I went through and um, and that permeates, and, it's, and that's lack of awareness from me, lack of con being conscious about the language I was using, because I was young, and I'm not thinking, oh, hang on, I'm not thinking deeply about this. You just want to get on and just, you just almost like going through the motions of life a little bit. I know I was, like, just going along, and, you know, but not thinking as deeply as I would now. So quite a few of these stories where you're saying through, Joe, and I think they give really good examples, because it's not just, like you said, where you've, well, you've got a couple of things there. The first one talked about, you were resistant, but you went into this thing, mm. and actually, from going into the the training you did with work, it turned out to be a really good thing. Mm. Despite that initial resistance, it's good you went with it. Mm. And the same with the band, there's that initial resistance, and you you um, actually learn from it. And you said there's a big risk when you're closed-minded that you're going to regret not doing things. 
So I've got a story, and this will shock you because this doesn't involve me being at work because there are oh, sometimes other <laughs> facets to my life. Oh, you've actually got a story that's not work related. I know. Wow, I'm impressed with this. So years and years years ago somewhere in my mid-twenties so a lot further ago than I'd like it to be and I remember I went out with um, some mates from work and we were, we were going to see a band which was led by this guy we really liked from from something else and um, it was in a little place on Brighton seafront called Concord 2 which is a really good place to go and watch bands so we went went there group of us watched the band warm up was really good the band was really good we had a couple of mates who were climbing on kind of like the poles were in the middle of the venue <laughs> and at the end of the and was that you Lou? that was that wasn't me oh was it not but oh. it was some other people um i wasn't a, i'm fu- different than i am now i was there's no way i was that kind of out there of a person okay. i wouldn't do sure. anything that made me stand out from other people okay. but because of them being up all the time eventually the lead singer from the band said oh come on guys you you've been up there all night you're doing really good come up here on stage with us and they climbed over the barrier and went up on stage and then a couple of other people climbed over the barrier and got up on stage and then suddenly there were 30 of us out of this you know thousand people that were there all up on stage with the band during the last song which was really really good and it's a really good event and it always sticks in my mind but then afterwards when everyone was loitering out the guys from the warm-up pack came out and actually came up and you know went over to the people i was with to say oh we saw you climbing up there that was really good and they were like oh do you want to come and have a drink with us afterwards and we said no and i don't know why and it still sticks in my head now and this is thought oh we've got to get back we've got to do work in the morning right all this stuff that were reasons not to do it Mm, that when i look back at it now especially then doing what i was doing if I went in a bit fuzzy headed in the morning it really wouldn't have been the end of the mm. world but at the time that was the thing in my head I oh, know we've got to get back it's late now blah 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 and I really always regret that we never went to the bar afterwards with the band and hung out with them and because it would have been a great experience and I've, and it's always there that there was just that resistance to doing it and I think when you said that ceiling thing it stuck with me that there were just all these excuses of being really close-minded to doing something different that I do really, really regret. And I knew if any, any situation like that comes up again, not that I go and watch bands anymore and that sort of thing, that I, I would do it. And I think that's where my being very, being closed minded to something there really, yeah. And I don't know why, it's a really small thing, but it, it stuck with me for all these years. Well, I don't think it is a small thing because you're actually reliving that right now. And, and there's a few things that come out of that for me. Uh, the thing is, one was regret. If you're closed minded, and you go back, I wish I'd done that. Yeah. You know, you get an opportunity. Regret was one of them, definitely. And you should use that as something to drive you to go, I don't want to feel like that again. So if something comes up, I'm going to go do it because I don't want to feel that I've not done the thing that I wanted to do. And the other thing is fear, potentially. And I think you, yeah, I think you're right. And fear's another one which, you know, will will make you close mind because I don't want to try it because, you know, I might fail or... Yeah, yeah. Or I don't want to... Oh, yours was... I'm going to be late for work and all that stuff going on in your head. And even then, you even now you can recall, which is really amazing, the thoughts that were going in your head at the time. That shows how powerful yeah. it is. So it's not. And when Lee said it was a small thing, this is not a small thing. It's something that that even now, where you are now, your age now, yeah. you're recalling that. But it's a useful, it's a useful uh, trigger point to say when something comes up, how can I now be open-minded and actually go try that thing? Even if I think, oh, don't really want to do it. I think it's really powerful. Wow. Like that a lot. Um, so fear, regret. You can use these all to these stories that we have, we always stories we tell ourselves, we can use these things to drive us. We can say, I'm not gonna have that again and say, so I'm not you know, I'm gonna use that. If I feel fearful or feel uh, you know, regret, I'm gonna that I'm gonna use that to how we develop mm. ourselves going forward. Yeah. So going forward with this as well. The Instagram, I did an Instagram live while I was up in Leicester. So I've been up in Leicester, um, lovely Leicester, and I did a bit of a, an Instagram vibe. I wasn't really feeling the vibe, and I thought, no, I'm going to do it. I yeah. just feel, because I hadn't done one for a while, actually, a couple of weeks, so I thought, I'm going to do it. And it, it was the best response I've had on Instagram live, and so I'm glad I did it. You know, quite a few people logged on, which is really good to see. But one thing that came out of it, which I, this is what I think about these opportunities and being open-minded, what came out of it is, um, I'm going to reference them um, at Noir Nero and at, on Instagram. And they were talking about development and self improvement. And they mentioned the Deming Circle. Have you ever heard of that? I've not, no, I don't think I have. So I hadn't either. So had I not done that Instagram live, 
had I given into the thing, I'm not going to try, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to be open minded to try and do it and just, just go with it, I wouldn't have learned about that. Um, so Deming, you know, Deming circle is just really a circle, and I'm going to show it to Lee because it's difficult to, but it's, so it's where you like so it's self development tool where you yeah. where you plan yeah you plan make a plan and then you do you do it on a small scale so it's almost like a pilot so you plan something you try to plan yeah. out on a small scale you then check the results you check the results start what work what didn't work and then you act on that and then you go back when you act on it you get the results you act into what works what doesn't and then you go back and plan again it's like so a it circle like a cycle, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's a quality circle yeah um and I hadn't heard of it um. Oh, what's going on here? Oh no! Please! Oh, it's alright. Still going. I my computer <laughs> had gone down there. there. It stopped, but it's fine. Um, but had I not done that, I would not do it. So it was just really. So I did some research. I did a quick thing on Google, as you do, and other search engines are available. And I found out. I know something new. I, that, and that's what I love about it. And 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 that, thank you to Nora Nero at Nora Nero for. Um, pointing it out to me because now I know something new and we can add this to the podcast. And like you said, you'd never have had that if you didn't push yourself through that or I'm not yeah. sure about this moment. Yeah, but I close my mind to the fact that I, I should do it. Um, and almost like it's my part, a bit of a bit mix there, pushing yourself to do something where you don't really want to do it, but no, it should be good for you. And of course, it, this might not come out, but it did come out and I would not, not have known that. So the way you look at things, so, um, so Einstein quotes something which I really quite liked, and there's another thing that I talked about in one of my videos. Uh, I can't remember which one it was. One of the ones during this week. Yeah. And Einstein said, um, "You can look at the universe in two ways. You you can say you can say, say, do I live in a friendly or a hostile universe? So if you look at it as in a hostile place, wherever you are, your work, you're always going to you're going always going to find hostility. You're going to find you're going to be looking for the trouble. You're going to be looking for the issues rather than if you find an issue and you think it's friendly, you think it's opportunity." Op- opportunistic you're going to look for the solutions to the issues and again it's part of being open-minded around the things that you're going to find the things that you're going to do so whatever you focus your mind on you're going to get that um and i did the same you know with my course and the band and gradually changed um lee had exactly the same the focus and now he's drawing on that now and now we're in different space but asking yourself those types of questions what sort of thinking are you going to have so what so sort if, of you're look, you if you're looking for negativity, you'll find negativity. Yes. And similarly, if you're looking for the positives or the good, yeah. you'll see that as well. Or if yeah. you're focusing your mind in the yeah. right way. You always find evidence to find what you're doing. And, yeah. and probably in our roles, actually, more than ever, actually, we were talking actually before the podcast, weren't we? When people find problems, they're, they're looking for the problems, but yeah. not, they'll find the evidence to back it up. Yeah. So they won't, it's not objective, it's driven by. I've decided it's going to be bad, yeah. so I'll make sure it's bad, rather than being the open-minded, let's see what yeah. this is. Yeah, so it's almost like they've already decided the outcome, or you've already decided the outcome, and now you're looking for evidence to justify the outcome. And we do this to ourselves. In business, a personal development, You know, we, we think, oh, it's all going to be bad, so we're going to focus on the bad, and we're going to look for the bad. We're going to focus, if, if it's something about... I don't know, uh, something's going to bad happen in wherever you're going, you might be focused on you, you think it's going to be bad, you to find something about that place that's bad's happening, you're like, see, yeah, it's I bad. Yeah, I don't like going there because this always happens yeah. when I'm there. I've heard so many things because you're listening, you're watching out for yeah, it, and I think it's such a powerful thing. You know, this person across the road is an a-hole, look what they're doing again, they always do this, sort of, but you're looking for that negative yeah. stuff to support your viewpoint. Yeah, and because you're closed minds into that, you're not going to open up. Now, if you said to me, oh, you know, Okay, there might be just some behaviour, behavior which may be said, but you say actually they're just they are probably quite an okay person. They're okay. They're probably okay. You know, they're a good person. You're going to spot the things that they do good. They probably cut their lawn or put your bins out or or tell you that something weirds happened in your neighbourhood. And it's really strange when you start focusing. And I've really been focusing this lately. You do find things that work for you, which is really great to see. Um, it's like you said right at the start of this one, Joe, is people are complicated. They're not just a good person or a bad person. Mm. They've got all these same mm. thoughts and issues mm. and everything that everyone else has. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's, it's the lens at which you, you look through that with the people. I love the lens. The lens <laughs> is about it. And again, it's, it's important. Isn't it? And that's why, you know, this is what this podcast is. Bring this to your attention. We want you to focus on this and think, what are you thinking right now? Actually, what are you thinking right now listening to podcasts are you open to it or are you closed to it i'd love to hear your comments on that so why don't you just tweet us or instagram us and be honest you know when you listen to this were you close oh that's a load of that's a load of rubbish they're talking a load of baloney 
That's a bit well, look at your serious language there, Joe, now. Get Sorry aggressive. To... Oh, is that too aggressive? <laughs> oh, sorry. But yeah, but that's what I mean. It's like, think about it now. When you're listening right now, take a minute to think, where are your thoughts right now? I think it's a really important exercise to try that. So your your uh, close and open minds to do with the environment, whether you're with people that go open or closed mindset, you've already started by listening to this podcast, you start to think about whether you're in that closed space or open space. I would remind you of your language we talked about before, just your language, you know, what sort of language are you saying, I can't do that? Yeah, I can't do that, no way I can do that. Like I did when I was the base story. Yeah. Um, I always think another way to sort of open your mind is to read books. Even if you don't necessarily agree with the author, you might find something in there that might, oh, actually I don't really agree with their standpoint, but actually the way they think helps me create a better version of me and becomes me more open-minded. So you're listening to the counter arguments. You're not just saying I'm right all the time. And we're not saying we're right all the time. Um, so in fact, actually today we had a Twitter engagement, didn't we? We did, yeah, yeah, with someone who actually- The got, moaning one. Yeah, and kind of challenged the concept, which again, we're really open to, because that's what we want is all this stuff is to open up discussions and not everyone is gonna agree, mm. but that doesn't mean that the initial views or the contrary views aren't valid because again they're all just different opinions on yeah. the on the subject so i've actually had this on instagram as well where someone said well i like i i, I think my own is good i like to vent and I, I i agree with that i think yeah you need to vent and then then if you keep doing it it becomes moan but but again we've all got our different ways of looking yeah. at it and it's to be open-minded and, and i like that because that's going to give that's going to give me learning because i'm open-minded lee's open-minded so it gives us learning and as what well. i thought was good within the comments as well is they weren't saying they weren't challenges to say you're wrong actually mm. this is the thing we're saying effectively isn't a good thing to be doing you should challenge yourself on they they're not saying well actually it is a good thing they also have the view that it's something to be challenged they were just coming at it from a different and they said it's you know that's a symptom not a root cause mm. which actually i you know i think is a really valid point so again it's it's very it's all different perceptions but all with the same goal in mind yeah i agree um and that's what it's all about, isn't it? Being open-minded. So language, read books. I said, find people you're going to think of be open-minded. You know, change your circle. You know, if you think, if you think, if you're thinking now when you're listening to this, and you think your circle is closed, change your circle. Start to, you know, I'm not saying, you know, you're still going to be mates and stuff or friends or, you know, but what I'm saying is, if you want to become more open-minded, you're going to find those other types of people that you want to, you know, those people that you think, oh, I think I could, yeah. you know, be a more open-minded. So your environment is really important practice every day. For me, to be up more, I'll do meditation, awareness, I'll do journaling, and I said we talked about journaling in the previous podcast. Meditation, I think, is a really powerful thing, and, and some people don't, some people do, but for me, that works, so I use it. I mean, in fact, this morning, got up at 5 a.m. this morning, did my meditation, went out for a run, and it all helps with me get into the spirit of the podcast. I did not get up at 5 a.m. just to qualify. That's okay, that's fine. <laughs> I and do Monday go. to Friday, though, just not at the weekends. No, and that's <laughs> the, but that's it, isn't it? And that's the whole thing, and everything's finding your thing what works for you um so again you've got to check in how you're feeling what do you feel closed what's your mind saying you know you're going to feel you know if you someone says something to you you're going to feel the feeling of being closed well, i don't agree with that and you're going to feel that resistance already think about that you now be real conscious and aware of where you are you know are you feeling low you know are you feeling or are you feeling inspired excited whatever people are saying whatever feeling you're feeling is it an open or closed type of feeling um mentors i think are really good um even if they're virtual mentors, like there's so much stuff on YouTube now out there, you know, have a look at different types of viewpoints if you don't agree with them. I do that a lot. I love it because it gives me different Just surround views. yourself with different opinions yeah, and like, see what you can take from them. Yeah, yeah I really like that. So diff no, different opinions, different viewpoints, different arguments, because you know, they've got they've, they've got a, a thinking system that you might take something from and it'll just gonna add and make you better at what you wanna do. Um, trusted friends as well, talk to them. You know, say to them, look, I think, to ask them their view on whether you think you're closed-minded or not. Oh, I said this to you, um, you know, what was your view on that? Or I, I know you did this and you didn't really sort of, you didn't feel receptive to it. What was that about? You know, ask your friend's opinion. Do you think I'm closed-minded or open-minded? But explain the context behind it. If what I mean is I want to be more open to new ideas. Am I? Those types of questions. And then open up the conversation. That takes quite a lot of strength, though. You've got to be brave because you've got to be honest with yourself. It's almost like when Lee talked about going have a go home and have a word with yourself type conversation or we referenced about the mirror test this is all part of that as well it's about being truthful around that openness so i'm going to do that for you right now joe oh, go on so i got here this morning 
Mm. We did our little bit of chatting about how the podcast's doing, planning mm. what we're going to do for today for this episode for everyone. Mm. And you suggested, as well as filming it, let's stream it live on Instagram. Okay. And everything we've just talked about, about some initial blockers and that thought of... Oh, I'm not sure I like that. Yeah. It came straight into my head when you did said it? that. I didn't, and actually, I didn't we're realize here, we're doing this. Yeah. And like I said, I like to think, well, you know, we, we're doing this podcast because being open minded to ideas yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but they, and obviously, we pushed through it because we, we're doing the Instagram thing now. It was, only, <laughs> yeah. it was only a short thought in my head, but kind of in, straight away, I was like, oh, we've not planned this. How are the logistics going to work? What are we going to do? Rather than, which was you, literally, you've got your phone, you've got your tripod, you put it there, and we're good to go. So there was all those complicating thoughts that rush through my head for a minute there's no problem with doing this we're doing it now but <laughs> I, that that instinct was there just because it was something a little bit different and not that i'm against the idea of doing mm. it it was more or oh, have we thought about this enough which i say didn't last for very long but it did definitely crept through me so being open and honest and saying about doing this and talking mm. about wanting people to be open-minded it, like you said, it is something you have to practice and sometimes it is something you have to fight against your instincts on and only, what, 40 minutes ago I was fighting my instincts on this. <laughs> that is so... Do you know what? And I, and I heard you said the word logistics and I almost just blasted through that and said, oh, yeah, it's fine, I've got it sorted. That was so strange. But that, blo- I said, but that, that is blocker weird. came in my head. But that's the whole thing again, that awareness. I didn't actually know you were feeling that, but how did you feel like inside? What was the sort of... What was the, what was you feeling? I mean, because it's quite a challenge for you because I know you feel... You know that feeling piece, get in touch with your feeling, yeah, can yeah. Be difficult. So you and I don't know thought. how to articulate it, but it's the same feeling like when you were talking about going on the course and mm. my thoughts of my story about going to see the band and mm. everything else. It's that same, and again, I say to you, it's kind of just above my stomach yeah, where I, I feel it. it. Okay, yeah. But I had, I had that there at that moment. But again, and I suppose so I is I wanted to do it. I just all those kind of instinctive things around will it work how will it work mm. all, all suddenly came in but like you said I didn't even need to worry about that stuff and you almost didn't even hear that I didn't. it didn't need to be a challenge <laughs> all, I, all I I turned into like the problem solver I, yeah. I, I said oh it's fine I've got it sorted we just got to get the mic put the stand up boom off we go I mean, I'd solved that. It's strange, isn't it? But it's good because, again, we're doing it and it's here. And in my head, I've already told myself, well, that wasn't such a big deal. And it's another step in that kind of self-development journey of pushing pushing through and not closing down doing things. Yeah. And I think that keeps back to almost like that regret piece. Yes. Almost like that stage thing. I love that. I think that's a really powerful thing. Because chances are I might have said, oh, let's do it next week. Let's do it next week. Oh, really? Sunday will be at week 20, and I'm still saying, oh, let's do it next week. Yeah, and I think there's a thing about that. We can overthink the things. And I yes. think you just got to just try it, and if it works, you know. But it's, it's difficult, because there'll be something that Lee says to me that I'll feel resistance around. But I think that's the whole point of this podcast, and the whole point of this whole Inspiration Nation piece. We're is that, all in a journey. Yeah, that we've all, you know, we're all... We all got our individual journeys, but we help each other along the way. So, you know, Lee actually being honest about this on the podcast, I think is that adds that that is adding massive value. I think personally, I think that I didn't, and that's and like that's opened my up where it's to Lee. It's actually, oh, okay, when I hear this from Lee, where is he? You know, oh, okay, maybe I need to like draw back or push him or hang on, just speak with him. And you know, so that for me is gain. And we, we next time you can just say, Lee, stop being so close minded, <laughs> give me a slap around the face and problem solved. Refer to episode 11. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I think this is actually really great. I mean, virtual mentors for me, I've got some great ones. I've got um, Tony Robbins at Tony Robbins, so we're probably referencing at Evan Carmichael, really like them. I'm um, also like give out um, a shout out to uh, Life at Fanta as well, um, because um, Life at Fanta and Evan Carmock is actually Mark Drager. Um, they work together. They, they've got um, their own podcast, and I really like what they're saying there. Also, t- uh, Tony also said Gary V, Mel Robbins, all these types of people. I use them as virtual mentors. So get in there thinking, what do they think about? So I'd ask you to go check them out as well because I think I really like what they got to say. And there's, there's elements of what those guys do that I've kind of taken into some of the infrastructure we have around the podcast. Mm-hmm. So I was seeing that as well, just by you mentioning these people and me mm-hmm. having a look. And I say, it's not, I've tried not to mimic what they're doing, mm-hmm. but it's little things they do that I really like mm-hmm. that have kind of built up the pattern around what we do now. And like you said, it's just that looking at what different people do and seeing where you can learn from it. And I just want to endorse you on all those names you mentioned because I think they all put some really, really good stuff out there. Yeah, and I think it, you synthesise it through your own value system. So it's not the same. You take the idea and you think you, you do it through your own value system and it comes out in a different sort of way. Yeah. So you are, you know, you're drawing on the inspiration and then you're channeling it through your current value system to produce something new. 
So you're a synthesizer. Synth- oh, can you say synthesizer. A synthesizer. <laughs> and I've heard, and I'm going to mention something else, at Dan Lock use that, and I really liked it because you are, you're like, you're individual. Everyone on this planet is different. Open, closed minded, whatever minded, you know, that's how we do it. So use everything you can as a reminder to become open minded. Like we've given you loads of few bits and pieces on here that you can look at. Um, I love this bit in the matrix. Everyone, I don't know, go on, or guys on the Instagram, put a little thing up if you, if it's a, you've heard the, the matrix or you've, You've seen about this scene, but when Neo, have you seen the Matrix? Yes. When Neo, quite some time ago now, but yes. Yeah. Okay. So I love this film. I've watched it so many times, and he's when he's on the building, he's just been put into the into the sort of the the training system, yeah. and he's got a leap, this impossible leap, and he keeps saying to himself, "Free my mind, free my mind," because Mor- Morpheus said, "Look, if you've got to make it, you're going to have to free your mind." And of course, he's going free. He's telling himself, and he runs to the edge of the building, and he jumps. And he gets about halfway, he falls down. Do you remember that bit? Yes, I do. And he yeah. bounces out. It's yeah, quite, yeah, yeah. quite unbelievable. But lovely. Oh, I just love it. But the whole point of that is that you can listen to this podcast. And this is why this is why I think these things are important. You take this podcast and you think, yes, I'm going to be more open-minded. I'm going to be more, But do you believe that you're open-minded? There's a difference between saying it and embodying it. So I want you to remember that. Because you will know whether you're open or closed mind. But at least just giving a good example, you'll feel it if you're not. You'll just get that finger up. You get the resistance, and that's what I want you to get in tune with about that open and closed mind piece. When you find so, like if you don't really like the person they're saying something to you, are you really listening to them with an open or closed mind? Ask yourself the question, and then you'll know. If you you will know if you're not because your your mind will say no, don't believe him, don't believe him. You'll be you'll be saying that all the time. You'll be like Neo saying, I believe, I believe, I, I'm, I'm going to jump, I'm going to jump, going to jump, and he fails because. You're not really embodying. You're not, yeah. not really engaging with that person because because you, you've got a sort of like an un, a conscious or unconscious bias with that person. Challenge it. Let's see if you can do that. Maybe this week. I'll tell us how you get on. Well, there's a few bits pieces there. Um, okay, so what's the plan then? So we dealt with a lot of stuff in the objectives. Here, what's the plan? So be conscious where you are. I've talked a lot about that. Um, be open mind. Get feedback from people who you trust. Is who you trust. It's important. Get those other types of mentors in your life as well. And that's number two. Get those virtual mentors. Get real mentors. Does anyone at work inspire you? I mean, I do look for that. You know, if there's anyone I find inspiring, I'll, I'll, I'll actively seek them out. And if and my rule is, if I hear someone's name three times that they've done good stuff, I'll seek them out because to me that's a sign to say actually I'm done. He's going to find out. So you might you might might be actively open minded and aware of the things you're going to seek out if you're finding that. Yeah, thing. and I've done that a couple of times and at, at prompting from my uh, um, person I reported to at work who's really over the last years really helped my development and they've really prompted me down the mental route and actually same as you. There's people who I've seen who I'd like to model myself mm. on and actually and it you know putting myself out there so it was difficult to do at first but actually dropped them a message and said look um, I'm looking to develop I like what you do something worded better than that but basically asking whether they'd be prepared to mentor me you know once in a while spend an hour talking me through stuff soundboarding and the important thing in that is never once has anyone come back and said no in fact to the contrary people are really enthusiastic about doing it so like you said about mentoring I'd encourage you if there are people who you look up to that you have any sort of connection with reach out to them let them know that see what you can learn from them and i say it's been really really beneficial to me doing that yeah and, and i look at through one more one lens which for mine is inspired yeah so if i find something but i want to go and seek that person out because i want to be with those so i want yeah, yeah. to feel inspired every day um so that's that's why i seek it and i think it's great um good um so take action at least um something at least once a day open your mind uh, whether it's changing your language, whether it's listening to something, podcast, it could be this one, it could be another one. There's all brilliant stuff out there. Um, don't be closed off to it. You know, just review. Look, look at the example we've got here. We've got a few examples. I've talked about Deming Circle. Didn't wasn't aware of that. I was open. It did the, the the Instagram live, and I learned something new. Um, I learned something new about Lee today, actually, that I wouldn't even know. And that was in the last 40 minutes. I wouldn't know that because Lee was open, um, open-minded to share that with me. Um, you, you didn't have to, but he did. So I think we covered it all, really. So, wow, that was a bit of a another, another I think another sort of in deep, in depth one. So, what is an open mind? We've covered that, you know, being open to things like you know, going out, as we said before, you know, being aware of your language. We've done how we can start to be open minded, mentorship, going seeking, you know, different types of material about what you're doing, and then lastly, planning it. You know, going and taking the action, going to see, going and asking, you know. And if you get that resistance about going to seek your mentor, they're going to love it because people yes. do love it. So, so seek your mentor. They want to. If someone asks me, 
oh, they went, I would say yes, absolutely. I've, you know, I've done that in my work career, and I actually say, look, if you need anything, come over and we'll chat about it. And I've actually coached people, group, group coach people, um, coach things. people. <laughs> I don't know because I don't out. encourage that in the workplace. <laughs> oh right, can we strike that one? <laughs> um, but yeah, so group coaching and stuff like that, which has been good. Um, and that's what it's about. It's about helping each other. And uh, I can't believe that was mad, is it? Um, Ryan, so we're not editing that bit out, by oh. the way, for this. <laughs> right, so. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's me done, really. I think it's. I think that's been really, really, uh, uh, really powerful one, really. Okay. No, that's really good. I've really enjoyed that this week, Joe. To, to loop the show right back to the start, my okay. commitment to you is I'm going to be more open-minded and I'm going to order more than just chili beef next time I go to the Chinese. Oh, oh so you don't order anything other than chili beef? <laughs> Perhaps some chicken balls and some rice. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> right, hope um, you've all got um, some good stuff to take away from this week. As always, we'd love to hear your comments. Um, you can find Joe across all the platforms at JN Coaching Tech. We are at Listen to IN, that is Listen T O I N. As always, please spread the words, encourage people to listen, leave us some reviews, and we will speak to you again next week. That's Inspiration Nation. We'll catch you guys later. Yeah, stop that now. Oh, I'll stop that. Let me do that. Oh. Okay. And we'll catch you guys later, too. And catch you guys later. Oh, God, I've got to do that end.